Play. Hey. Still talking about aging. We got a hundred years talking about the life and times of Five for Fighting. Has anyone heard from Five for Fighting? Have you seen them? Are they touring in New York City? No. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you confirm that? Did you did you fact check? I did that? not confirm that. I don't know. I'm going to say no. That was. You wanted to run a little longer because right now you're when you're dancing makes everybody happy. I mean, all the fans are watching. Slower dance. It's a little two step. What's it? Hitch. Oh, we can't talk about Will Smith either. He, he got canceled. No, please don't. Welcome back to the Demand Better Podcast, where we are your consumer's guide in the health and fitness space. I'm your host, Corona, and I am joined by everybody's favorite physio, Dr. Bo Babenko, who's coming from us, coming to us from Superior, Colorado. We will also have at 302, it's 301 right now. He's got a minute. Your XYZ. Great, one of the best journalists, award-winning journalist, Faraz Javed. Bo, what's up, man? What is up? I am living the dream out here. Um, Are you yeah. lying? Are I'm you never lying? lying. I mean, what is the dream? Watching The Sandman a little bit on Netflix, That's that's got a lot of dream. I don't know if Neil Gaiman fan. Are you a Neil Gaiman fan? Do you know Neil Gaiman? No, no. You don't, no. Uh, you don't seem the type. No. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's not woke. Um, before we move on, let me just take this one second here. Don't give me the eyes, man. Let me take one second. Here. We are sponsored by Fit Care Physiotherapy and Wellness, where the idea is to focus on your fitness so you can avoid the health care system. All right, guys. So we come back. We got a nice response. We come back to, to help our seniors one more time. And we will continue to do this because we need to demand better from our healthcare system when it comes to this. Do you want to do the recap vote? Um, I, I'm excited about the the the, the moving forward. The so moving maybe forward. you do the recaps. Well, no, we're, we're basically. Oh, we're, Faraz is late. He's officially late, folks. Is is he late already? It's it's 103 over here, aka 303, and he said he'd be at 302. Not to be, you know, nitpicky or anything. Okay. <laughs> So listen, what we went over last time, we basically went over the issues that, se that seniors have. We really didn't get a chance to go into that. Those, those issues are sarcopenia, osteoporosis, osteopenia, all these issues that they have that, can, that, by the way, can be avoided. Can be avoided. All right. So we went through all that. We got a response back. I want, I want to throw in not just avoided relatively easily reversed with yes. the right approach. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for correcting me on that. Yes. And that's a, it's an important, and again, I, I'm trying to be less nitpicky, even though I'm calling out for Raz, but, um, <laughs> but I think it's a very, very important distinction because if somebody has a person in their life or is a person with any of those conditions, osteoporosis, osteopenia, sarcopenia, it can be very frustrating to say, oh, the doctor said I have this condition. I need to start taking this medication, and that's it. You're on that path forever until you break a hip. And, well, and it, yeah. Well, we, we, we went through this last time. What we went through last time, we basically discussed that we're too soft on our seniors. Our doctors don't demand stuff from our seniors, and we ourselves are too soft. I, mean, I have a 92-year-old mother. I ride her like she's the Pony Express. Um, it, people sometimes think I'm being mean. I am not. I forced my mother to move. And everyone says when she does move, she's 92 years old. She moves. She can walk. She can walk mileage. Um, and she and she, you know, she. It's not her gait is good for where she has, is at in life. I also have my client who's 95, who also was in a, was in a walker, who now walks without a walker. So these things can be changed. I'm tired of hearing I'm too old. Um, oh, I don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do it. You have to push yourself. If you don't want to be in a walker, you don't want to be in a wheelchair, and you're not going to move a lot, you're going to have problems getting older. And as and we get older, we're seeing this all the time, and it can be changed and, the and deeper, reversed. And the deeper you are in that medical system, the more medications you're on, yes. the harder it is to reverse those things. So I don't know what my dog's going crazy about back there, <laughs> but but uh, yeah. So uh, we're still waiting for Faraz, by the way. Just, just gonna, 
that we're at 305 right now yeah. um <laughs> just just want to make sure we're on for as watch we're on for as watch here we go for as watch you should put in a little banner up there for as watch uh, <laughs> so with that being said and that being left because i don't want to sit here and harp out all this stuff i just want to make sure that people fully fully understand that a lot of problems that seniors have can be reversed and prevented in the first place by being active and what you do today does matter yes for Raz watch what you do today people does matter for how you will age going forward i've done a lot of dumb stuff i'm not here saying i'm perfect I've done a lot of dumb stuff but we can prevent this stuff and i'm watching my mom and it's it's tough man it's sometimes it's very very tough because her mind doesn't work as well as it should all the time but with that being said, she's physically, physically able to do everything she can, which is wonderful. My mother's on zero medication, peeps. It's very rare for someone 92 years old. That that I will also thank you, Bo. I will also say this about my mom. She's she's never drank. Um, and she believes in church. Oh, oh, we're on for Watch. We said 302. And if you say 302, I'm sorry, folks. I got we got Faraz just joined us. You know, the award elevator issues. Elevator. The award, the award-winning journalist from Channel X Y Z. This is Faraz Javed. I bet you, if this was a story, he would have been there at three o two because three o two is a specific time. If you want an ish, you give us more of a three o'clock ish because then we know. But three o two is a specific time, so I'm a little disappointed right now. I'm right now. El Martillo, as we call him, El Martillo, is waiting to crush your dreams. Go ahead, for us. So welcome, I, welcome yourself to the. So your I, I, I like to apologize to you, Corona, and Al Malfio, and all the viewers and listeners out there for me being, I guess, four minutes late. I do want to say, in my Number defense, three oh seven, my elevator <laughs> broke down, and we had a hard time. Uh, well, I had a hard time coming up. So my apologies. Next time, I will give. 305 for safety. I'll put three minutes for safety. <laughs> well, Bo, El Martillo, as he's known, affectionately known by his family and friends. <laughs> I will just say I'm disappointed. That's all. Wait, what? That's it? Okay, so let's keep it moving. Because for as is late, we were talking and doing the recap from our last show because we're in part two. Yeah. And we were discussing that the issues that people have, especially our seniors, their issues can be reversed and they can be prevented. We have to be active today so we can have a better future tomorrow. And if you are of that age, you need to start moving now. Now is too late. You need to go. Get up. Let's get going. Let's get you moving. With that being said, let me give you some stats. Um, so that we got every 19 minutes, an elderly person falls and dies. Wow. Um <laughs> Physical inactivity, the physical inactivity due to COVID-19 pandemic has linked falls in the elderly. 67 of falls don't happen from height. They're people either slipping or tripping. Seniors over the age of 60 suffer the most fatalities from falls. And, and just you, to be clear, just for, for some, a little bit of background on those statistics is... They don't necessarily die from falling, but if they break a hip and they have to be bed bound, uh, the deconditioning and already being at a relatively low level of conditioning is what invariably leads to the unfortunate passing away in those situations. Yeah. Thank you, Bo. I appreciate that. Annually. Oh, well, there we go. Annually falls account for 95 percent of hip fractures. And the 300,000 elderly people hospitalized for it. And the last one I'm going to give you, which I think is the most important for everybody to hear. Listen to me clearly. Patients' falls are preventable. And I'll add, to that, I'll add to that a lot of folks I see over the age of 50, um, a lot of women especially, um, when they're dealing with menopause and things like that. And, and by the time they get to me, they, they're looking to get probably hopefully stronger and recognize some uh, shortcoming in that regard. But during any assessment I do, no matter how healthy it is, again, if I was assessing either of these guys on the call here and 
uh, if I was assessing um, Maha, Lexi, whatever, I'm going to assess um, their balance as definitely one of the initial pieces of where are you in this scheme. So in those populations, it's mind boggling to me again, how it, it is mind boggling, but it's also makes sense because we tend not to work on these things. So balance again, just simply standing on one leg. If you're out there listening to this and you're maybe at an office, maybe you're walking, stop and check the time. We're at 10 30 right now. I'm standing on one leg. Can you stand on one leg for 60 seconds? And again, I'm also baffled how many runners, people who consider themselves runners are not able to stand on one leg for 60 seconds. So just the shuffling of the feet and these things. And again, I don't want to make this a uh, complaint about every little thing that I see and, and, you know, uh, really grinds my gears kind of thing. But, but I did you want do. to throw that out there. Go ahead, Pros. So here, here's the thing. Speaking of balance, how does that change as we age, Bo? Because look, I mean, if you can hold your balance right now for a minute, will that change as you grow old? A hundred percent. So, I mean, within the balance, there's a couple of systems. We talk about the really common statistic we throw out there is you lose one to two percent of your muscle mass uh, every year after the age of 50. Um, we, we throw out the, after the age of 30, you do start to decline as well in different things. This is assuming being sedentary, not training mm -hmm. against that as we have a 50 something year old in the middle here um, who no. Nope, Always do his backward. There it is. There he is. Um, <laughs> uh, so he's he's showing that again. Yeah, he's probably as fit, if not fitter, than most twenty-year-olds out there. Not the, yeah. So he'll, <laughs> he'll, 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 let's 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 take it easy on the compliments. Um, but yeah, we lose muscle mass. So balance is based on three systems. To be very clear, balance is based on three systems. I appreciate you asking that question. Number one, and can you any anyone in the class want to chime in on which are the three systems? I'm not gonna let Perez do all this. I'm chilling. Uh, well, so I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I, but you know what? You could, you probably judge me for this. I, you know, I will always judge you. Al, al Marti. <laughs> um, we'll it's, it's, isn't it the hearing me. aspect? One is should be yes. somewhere hearing. Yes. Oh, that, it's, that it's vestibular. Yes, yeah, so vestibular. Yeah. That's when people get um, vertigo and things like that. So there is yeah. stuff in your ear that helps with balance. There's little crystals in there. Uh, little bits of fluid and hair that tell your brain and send signals constantly. So when your head is down, this is actually why people get car sick because car sick, uh, those little crystals are feeling the vibration and feeling the movement, but then the visual or your physical body is not, especially if you're little and you can't see out. Same thing if you're seasick, they tell you to look out at the horizon because there's a disparity between your visual system, which is one of the three, um, and, and what's going on in your inner ear there. So, uh, yes, that's and, very, and, and I will say this, I want to add this since I work with the senior population, many, many people who are older, who, who have ear infections and stuff like that, that will have trouble with balance. I'm not saying it's all from the vestibular system. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying like my client had an ear infection and had trouble standing today. She came in, she's been feeling better not a problem, felt great, did everything I asked her to do, was working off a suspension trainer at 95, had no problems, and does stand up for about 20 to 30 seconds on one foot with no problem. But, so here's the thing. I mean, that, that's uh, fitness is not going to affect that, as in, like, you know, um, your hear, the ability to hear or not to hear. But you, but your an ear infection will affect your fitness. Yes, but at the same time, to Faraz's point, Movement is medicine, which is a very important concept. Sure. And the fitter you are, the healthier you are, this goes back to nutrition. All of these things will continue to keep this healthy versus as we age, our body yes. literally is deteriorating. That's what we're talking about here. So even in the inner ear, if you're just keeping that stagnant and you're not challenging that in unique and very intentional ways, that is where we lose some of that capacity. So 100%. I will challenge you to say uh, that relationship does go both ways. So those inner ear pieces uh, are, in fact, improved by challenging it. So, again, when you're doing uh, and it's hard to do and not everyone wants to do these kind of things. But, yeah, if I'm doing some kind of single leg balance, if I can hold that for 60 seconds, cool. The next thing is close my eyes. And if yes. I'm starting to, to waver, that's telling me the other two systems. So the three systems to bring it all back is one, the inner ear piece two, the visual system, our eyes three. And we didn't name it. Anyone want to name it? Muscle? 
Yeah, the right. muscle. Thank you. Exactly. That's why I was talking about the losing muscle mass. So I was thinking of something different. But go ahead. The term is proprioception. That's okay. The term is proprioception. It's that's where we are in space. About. Yeah, well, that's the fun, fancy term. But again, if I close my eyes and I, someone places my hand and I say, hey, what degree is my hand in or my wrist in? Uh, I should be able to feel where that is without looking. Uh, so they've done some really cool studies around this stuff. But those are the three systems that affect balance and, again, likelihood to be uh, to not fall. And again, falling is definitely one of those things that um, is very dangerous as we have weaker bones, weaker hip well, capsules, so things like that. Let's take it right there. That's, that's great. So, so most people who, who are seniors sit a lot. So we're, looking, we're basically looking at tight psoas, tight hip flexors, glutes don't fire, chest is actually tight, upper traps are overly active. They are in a position to fall. Their abs don't fire, their heads launch forward in a lot of situations. What's really interesting about that is that's the way our teenagers look now and their kids are going to college. They're on those computers all day and that hunchback look exactly as Bo's doing it. Yes. So with that being said, when you're younger, you can recover much easier. When you're older, it, you're going down. So you're, you're going down. That's called tech neck is what they call it now is tech neck. So when we're dealing with seniors, we really have to look at what they do daily and counteract that so that they don't have these falls. In terms of what we do from a from a fitness component, which is the same thing we should all be doing. But when it comes to seniors, they don't do this. It's just let's get them moving. And I, for for me, I'm not bashing anybody. I think we got to evolve and we have to get better and give. Now that I have someone in my life and I work with this population, I think it's vitally vitally important that we actually put out the things that are necessary for them and give them supports around this. Corona, you keep saying them, but I do think you're pretty much in that population. No, I am. I am. I am. I'm just. I am. I'm partially teasing, partially. But all seriousness aside, I do want to jump over to what I have going on on the scroll on the bottom here. And for anyone listening, when we put this oh, on the yeah. audio, um, the evidence shows. And again, this connects to what we were just talking about. The four biggest correlates to living a better, longer life and delaying mortality. Uh, so delaying morbidity mortality these are fun terms we talk about but bottom line is pushing back how much you can be active you can survive as well as not die so you're pushing back death so these are the four biggest correlates that have been shown in the research and i actually have them almost listed in reverse order uh vo2 max i'll say has actually been one of the the number one thing i've seen to correlate to a longer life now VO2 max fancy term that basically says, how well do you bring oxygen into your body? Is that Corona with those New York City noises? And no, no. Oh, that's Detroit, Detroit City, Detroit Rock City. Got to gotta get those windows that, uh, that block the sound. Um, <laughs> I think it's so, very rude that you blamed me. <laughs> <laughs> he just stereotyped you. <laughs> I mean, I should be able to differentiate between a New York City siren and a Detroit siren. Well, I, I guess you're not a New, a New Yorker now. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Bo. I just thought so VO2 good. max is the ability to bring oxygen into our body and push carbon dioxide out. If you've ever seen those commercials back in the day for Gatorade, people are wearing the mask and it's measuring those that gas exchange. And when we say gas, we're not talking about uh, Corona on a Friday night. Um, boo. Bad joke. Bad joke. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and fall on that grenade. Boo. Um, but <laughs> smash it. So. VO2 max is one of the biggest correlates, and that's just basically your aerobic engine. So uh, one of the other ways to test this without all the fancy equipment is how far can you go in 12 minutes? In the elderly population within physical therapy, we're talking about a much lower uh, capacity type of population. So all we do is a six-minute get-up-and-walk test. And so you're just going up and down the hallway in, in, let's say, an assisted living facility. And you can say, hey, you know, again, someone someone who's a 92-year-old mother uh, or like Corona's mother, uh, she might only go a little bit. But if you go and see the videos of Corona's mother, she she could probably go a mile in 12 minutes. Um, <laughs> you know, she's doing great. So, but that's a measure and we can compare what our other 92 year olds doing. Um, and, and as we get into that age range, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So I threw a lot at you guys. So VO2 max is the first one. Number two, really simple, is the ability to get up and down off the ground. So, you know, that's one of the reasons we call burpees, functional fitness in CrossFit, uh, just getting up and down off the ground. And the less points of contact you use to do that, that's more indicative of living longer, less likely to die. So not having to use your hand 
on something to, to grab onto and, and lift yourself up, being able to do that with just your legs. That then connects to leg strength. So I'm reading these kind of backwards as they're scrolling. Leg strength comes back to our senses and our, our systems for balance. So uh, leg strength generally in research is going to get measured with the leg press, maybe a squat. Uh, but these are kind of things that ability to, again, get up and down out of a chair. And Corona was talking a little bit about, and I'll let him get back to, you know, heights of couches and things like that for seniors. So some really interesting stuff there. And then the last one is grip strength. So at the end of the day, uh, we can do a really simple measure of grip strength. And if you see that's changing over time and deteriorating, that's a problem. And it's a very cheap tool to get. The grip is the, probably the easiest one of all these to measure. Um, and all you have to do is get these grip dynamometers on Amazon. I'll probably try to put a link somewhere down below and 25 bucks, 30 bucks, and you can just squeeze it really hard and it'll tell you, Hey, you're able to squeeze 72 pounds on your right hand and 62 pounds on your left hand. Um, so again, if you have that imbalance, we want, might want to address that. If you're trying to do certain things, uh, we want to be able to keep an eye on that objective data and give us better metrics. Then when you go to your doctor and I'm not saying don't go to your doctor, conventional medicine is looking at some of this basic blood work and saying, what's your cholesterol, what's your heart rate, what's your blood pressure, all these things, we can put that in. But the grip strength has actually been shown to be more related and correlated to living longer, living better. So that's something I think is worth keeping an eye on. So that's an actionable step from today. If you want to start tracking one of your biggest metrics, start testing your grip strength. Let me ask you this. And if that's all right with you, Corona, because I know you get, you're getting pretty upset today that I'm asking the questions. <laughs> no, so um, I was speaking to a senior citizen um, last weekend, and um, I was like, oh, you need to start working out. You know, it, 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 most of your ailments could be addressed by if you lead um, an active lifestyle. And this individual was telling me, oh, I'm too old for it. My bones are going to break. You know, I mean, I'm just basically condensing it to what the sentiments were. Now, Let's say someone like this who's never, and I know we touched slightly uh, on this in our last episode, but if someone has concerns of their bone density, one, how does fitness help? And two, if their bones are weak right now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying they're weak to a point that, you know, they just break instantly, but let's say they are weaker, um, can they jump into fitness? Obviously, this is in conjunction that jumping would be a good thing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Pun intended. Granted that they do go to the doctor and get themselves evaluated. Uh, do you want to jump in there, Dr. Bo? Go ahead. I'll, I'll so my, 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 my really quick take on that is to the first part of your question. Uh, uh, it was it was say it again. It was uh, how. Should they be jumping into fitness? That was the second part. That was the second question. First part, how does fitness help their how bone does fitness density? Help? So, yeah, I mean, again, the, we talked about it on the last episode is, is the simple concept of Wolf's Law. So your body will adapt to the stresses imposed upon it. So SAID, said principle, specific adaptations to imposed demands. Our bodies are very smart creatures. They're always in homeostasis. So they're putting, and we have limited resources, what's inside of our body. So when somebody has already weak bones, uh, if, if they've been diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis, osteo just meaning bone, penia is the first part of the, the degradation uh, where they fall into the, the kind of pre-osteoporosis. Uh, and then osteoporosis is there's, there's pretty much a, a, a very weakening piece where we're saying, hey, you're diseased to the extent that your bones are that weak. So your body has adapted to a lack of stimulus. That tells me that you just have not put in the stimulus. Again, if you don't have a lot of money in your bank account, it's telling me you either spent too much money uh, or you don't make enough money. So we need to simply reverse that. So we need to start putting those stimulus into uh, the body. So that's going to be, as, you, as, as we joked about in the pun intended, is jumping into it uh, is some version of jumping. To, to kind of put the pieces together is, how is fitness going to help? It should not be jumping into just any, any fitness program. You're not just going to go do CrossFit or jump and say, hey, you're a personal trainer. Uh, you have a six-pack. Uh, get me a six-pack. It shouldn't be that. <laughs> not to be too facetious about uh, the things that we kind of joke about in almost every episode. But at the end of the day, 
fitness should say, hey, you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, you have weak bones, we are going to gradually progress you to get stronger bones. And here's how we're going to do it. Here's how frequently we need to do it. Here's what you need to do at home. Here is what you need to start eating. There should be a full plan in place. There should be communication, especially if they have a true diagnosis between the whoever it is, personal trainer, physical therapist, medical doctor, uh, the, the caregivers within that individual's life. If you have children, grandchildren, anyone who's in their, that person's life, if they don't have that, if they're in a nursing home, we need to be able to talk to the staff there to say, hey, we need uh, Mr. Javed to start, uh, you know, doing these exercises, however many, once a day, whatever the thing is, and we need to keep an eye and keep that communication. The systems we have in place are not great for that. Uh, the fear is nobody's going to follow up with Mr. Javed. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of nuance to this, but to try to finish and answer your questions is fitness will help by creating an adaptation of the body. So if your bones are weak, we need to start stimulating the bones without breaking them. And the more we can build the capacity of the bones, that is going to create stronger bones. So you're less likely to break a hip, which will lead to most likely death uh, in a lot of cases, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the part of fitness. And the other kind of bonus side effect benefits, side effects may include feeling stronger, feeling more confident, feeling empowered, uh, being able to do more stuff now you're able to go and do the walk with the rest of the, the senior citizens or whatever in the silver sneakers program. Now you're building that confidence. You're building communication. You're building connection. You're building a purpose. You're building a community. These are all the things. And there's these huge gaps right now. That's what we're trying to allude to that uh, a lot of folks fall in between there. And they're like you said, they're just like, I'm too weak. I'm not I'm not able to engage in these things. And, and to, to add on to that, I like my mother's generation was in a generation in which exercise was important they're immigrants came here we got to work our butts off we got to get our kids to school that that was it so they didn't really exercise they were and now my mom now my mom we had every meal at home and i grew up very differently but what's ended up happening now there aren't those support groups they're just not there because exercise when you talk about older people getting together now you're talking about marjan sitting and doing an activity. I believe you Not mean a, Mahjong, the, the little tile game. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but in terms of osteopenia, osteopenia and osteoporosis are coming out in 30 year olds, 40 year olds. Osteopenia is, hmm. it's early. It, people are getting this early. We're talking it like it's a, a geriatric type disease. It's not, it's happening in young people. And the bottom line is we need to lift weights. We need, yes to challenge ourselves physically. And if you go, I always say, is go back to indigenous people, indigenous cultures, you'll see the older generation sitting down and talking to you in a squatted position. Does that answer your question, brother? Um, first of all, Corona, I've heard so much about your mom. At some point, we would we would like to see a picture of her. Um, oh, sure. Go, go, <laughs> yeah, on his, should, go on his social media. He's got videos really? of her on there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Somebody so, has not so, been stalking other people on yeah, your social media. And if you go on LinkedIn, you'll see I put up a video so, of her with my 95-year-old. So, so do a shameless plug. What's your handle? My handle's right there. It's at Demand Better. We have it. We all, I'll put up the I'll put up one on, at Demand Better today. You can go to at Start Living. You can go to David Corona at LinkedIn. You can go to, to Corona on Twitter. It's all over the place, my friend. I love it. Okay. I, I, my mom is everywhere. She is affectionately known as the white hair bandit. <laughs> love it so question for both of you and and i know bo you slightly touched on this and i wonder if if this is uh, a problem do you think um medical doctors um when they see someone with with a bone condition like osteoporosis or osteopenia do they tell their patients you have to be careful your bones are getting brittle you know, and, and then do you think patients take that as, oh, I just have to stop doing whatever I'm doing? Unfortunately, without over, you're kind of forcing me to overgeneralize, but uh, that's, that is the system we kind of have because unfortunately there's liability involved. Uh, yep. There's not a lot of great resources. Again, if you're a physician in New York City and you know some, a personal trainer like David Corona, and you can say, hey, you have osteoporosis. You need to find someone like David Corona or go see David Corona. Here's his information. 
Um, those systems are hard to come by, or they might even, they might have a list of here's a couple of personal trainers, um, that, you know, we can send you to, uh, there is a new system called osteo strong that, you know, I, I'm a little skeptical. I don't know if they're still, um, if, if, if they're, you know, I don't know enough about their complete concept, but, or the way they run their organization, but I will say, I like, they're one of the few new emerging things again we've seen soul cycle we've seen f45 and we've seen the rise and fall of a lot of these things too osteo strong is literally uh addressing seniors with weaker bones and they have a nice seemingly progressive overload system uh that, that's going to address that so when someone goes in there and yes this is what leads to a lot of these things too when they're 50 years old or they're 40 years old and they have knee pain their doctors unfortunately this is way too common and i'm going to challenge any physician out there to, to have these conversations. And obviously there's phenomenal physicians. I want to always throw that disclaimer out there, but a lot of them, and I've heard these concepts is say, do not squat below 90 degrees. This is unfortunately a very, very yes. common myth. So, why, first of all, why do they say that though? Because again, it's that protecting you. It's what's the easiest thing again. And, and for the, the simple statistics here in America, especially is a physician spends less than three minutes with each patient. So if you're coming in there, I have knee pain. Okay, here's a pill to address your knee pain. Maybe we need to look at surgery. Maybe we need to get you an MRI. Maybe we need to get you an x-ray. These are the tools we have. And if you squat below 90, most people do not do it right. Most And the, the conversation here is if you talk to me or Corona, we're going to take you through a probably big assessment. We're going to take you through at least 60 minutes of, of a conversation just about your knee, how your hip affects your knee, how your foot affects your knee, how your shoe wear affects your knee, how your diet affects your knee. Um, in three minutes, it's a lot to cover. Even if even in 60 minutes, I don't think we get as much done as we would like. So we need, we, hey, we need to do this over the course of the next six months. So unfortunately, not everyone has the resources. When you're in that system with the doctor, the doctor doesn't have a lot of resources like me or Corona to say, go see Corona. I trust Corona or here's a list of personal trainers or physical therapists that I trust that you can go see. There is a lack of that. So the physician has to give them something. A lot of times it's if you don't bend below 90 degrees, you're kicking the can down the road and you're not going to have a lot of a lot of knee pain. But what you're doing is you're sacrificing your fitness. You're sacrificing your knees health if you don't go below 90 degrees, uh, which unfortunately here in America, total knee replacements are, you know, like it's, it's, you know, you're expected to have that when you get above a certain age. If you go and, and hang out with a group of 60 year olds uh, playing golf or whatever they're doing or playing Mahjong, uh, I would <laughs> at least, I would say at least half of them in any of those settings are going to have had a knee replacement, a hip replacement, some version of that, which are all coming from modern living from a lot of these things of we don't go below 90 degrees. We don't sit and we can bring it back to Corona. You want to talk about that squat challenge? Oh, no. That, listen, man, I had knee pain in the beginning. I didn't have knee pain in the end. I don't have knee pain now. And I'm going to say this to you for well, us. Tell, tell them what the squat challenge is. The no, squat no, challenge was sitting for 30 minutes in the bottom of a squat, not consecutively, but throughout your day. I've had three for major 30 knee, days for 30 days. And I had I had three major knee surgeries on my right knee. I have no PCL. And when I first started doing it, first three, four days, it was agony, man. It wasn't fun at all, but I went down and I kind of stuck with it. And then what ended up happening, the joint itself started opening up. And then all of a sudden, I was sitting there comfortably in that squatted position and, for a good and, and, and listen to what we're talking about here. Corona is one of the more educated humans I've ever met. And again, don't let, don't let your head go past the size of the screen. Um, <laughs> but to Faraz's question is, even as, even as educated as Corona is, uh, there's a lot of people who are much less informed about the way the body works. Even he goes into the, I'll go ahead and call it the lizard brain of saying like, I just don't, I don't want to do that because I know it's going to be uncomfortable. But I challenged him. I said, hey, as a physical therapist and as someone who cares about you, I think you're going to benefit from squatting in this deeper range of motion and look lo and behold, A, he's benefited from it. B, he shared and we've shared this whole concept and we've seen a lot of people say, hey, like my knees feel a lot better. Go figure. This is crazy. What are you guys doing? How does this work? Um, so what are yeah. the benefits? OK, so what are the benefits if you squat below 90 degrees? So the really simple, simple concept, and I'm going to demonstrate here with my arm is if my arm, if you know, if I if I simply only go to 90 degrees, which is what the and if you can analogize that as the uh, for anyone watching uh, as this is the foot, this is my knee, this is my uh, hip. So if you're only doing that, you're only squatting to 90 degrees and you're never 
engaging oh, that rest of this camera is always confusing. You're never going to this full range of motion. This range of motion gets rusty and rusty, just like any, uh, yes. anyone who understands anything about mechanics or, or again, all these other sciences is you're simply not again, uh, utilizing that range of motion. So that we'll call it, you know, last 35, 45 degrees of range of motion gets very, very rusty. The joint is not going through its full 180 degrees in, in the knees case, maybe 135 degrees um, of a range of motion. So all you're doing is kind of rusting that piece and rust then in, in human uh, terms becomes arthritis. And so arthritis bone on bone becomes a total knee replacement. So by going into those deep, moving. Yes. By, and again, motion is lotion is, is the fun term. Movement is medicine. Full range of motion is vital. Um, and so this is why, again, if you're not going into these deeper ranges of motion uh, and the really simple anecdotal analogy uh, is in the third world, if you're in India, Pakistan, China, you know, whatever we want to call that, uh, the Middle East and, and Asia, some people call it the Asian squat or Chinese squat as well, is if you're not squatting all the way, again, you're rusting, A, your ankles, knees, hips, spine. B, we can anecdotally, observationally see the rates of total knee replacements, total hip replacements, uh, arthritis in those joints are significantly lower. I will say, A, this is observational. It's not the most gold standard form of science. B, there's a lot of other factors going into it. Again, jokingly calling it the third world squat. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors there. But evidence-wise, we still see that there is much lower levels of those conditions versus in our modern world diseases modern disease well is, yeah you know one one thing about the, the the countries that you mentioned some of them i mean i'm not sure if you know this but i mean they've got squatter potties right squatty I mean, potties squatty potties right i mean, I, mean I, I have i have one here too um you really? yeah of course yes no 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 no. Well, no but the, the, i'm talking about the one which you have to are you talking about like? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to break that down. I'm just saying, are you talking about like a little tool that you have that makes it transforms into it, or you really yes. have that traditional one? No, I don't have a hole in the ground. I think okay. is what you're talking about. Yeah. We have we have a little step stool, and people, you can do this on the cheap. You can get a few books and just stack them, right. and you put them uh, as feet on your next to your toilet seat, so that ultimately in your toilet you're in this deep squat. Um, so yeah, it's squatty potty is the, is literally the term. Um, and you can get the nice fancier wooden looking one, or we just have the white plastic one, which I think is 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, and so, yes, you can get that and turn any toilet pretty much into a squatty potty. Um, that, Corona, question for you though, is I know in CrossFit, for example, and then this probably will tie up to seniors fitness. Cause I know one thing, um, and that's because Bo brought up that point about not squatting below 90, 90 degrees. And I have seen, I know in CrossFit, we have to do that. But mm -hmm. do you encourage that in, I know you're not pure bodybuilding, but you're in the traditional gym setting, but do you encourage that for your clients? I, I do encourage full range of motion in all clientele. I think all clientele has to have full range of motion. Listen, when you're dealing with, with like knee replacements, like Bo has had and stuff of that nature, most trainers don't do stuff like this, man. It's, this isn't, the world of training is, is, is filled with a lot of people who have, book knowledge, but don't have 3D knowledge or empirical knowledge where they work with the people who have done it themselves. Um, you have to have people go through full range of motion. It's, it's, it's just point blank. There's nothing else. There. The thing, all, the other thing I want to make, kind of tie it back to seniors, the whole knee replacement stuff that we're seeing, it's painful, man. And a lot of seniors really don't ever really do the full recovery. They just don't. And they have pain the rest of their lives. And it's sad. My mom had both knees replaced. And when I was there, I was yelling at the doctors to push her. When I got there, when she had the surgery, I said, get her out of bed today. And they were like, what are your nuts? And my mom was like, it's time for you to leave. And at that time, my father was alive. And I, I, they got her up and they walked her. My mom is now gardens and stuff. You have to force people to do this stuff, man. It sucks. But the reality is, with seniors, we are way, way too helpful. And to bring it back to, to Faraz's question about why are doctors saying don't squat below 90 or, yeah, let's put the kid gloves on. Again, unfortunately, we're in a litigious society, uh, especially here in America, where if the doctor says, you know what, go go do whatever class, 
there's a huge amount of nuance there. Yeah. Uh, again, if they don't have the time to make it much clearer, even in a, in a handout or to provide those kind of resources, um, unfortunately, there's just, again, this is a huge gap that exists. And that's why we're talking about demanding better from this care and this system, because again, these simple things become reality of, hey, you have osteoporosis, here's 50,000 IUs of vitamin D, you're gonna do that injection, whatever, once a week, once a month, um, which by the way, will not absorb into your bones if you're not creating the stimulus, the Wolf's Law we were talking about of the jumping, some kind of impact, even if I'm just right now smashing my heels into the ground a little bit. Um, and so I do wanna throw a lot of nuance in there of, that's one of the reasons we're, we're asking folks to demand better. And the other part of this too, and, and Corona, and I wanted to go here. Thank you for, for taking us here is let's talk about again, here in this country, what are the organizations that elderly folks are going to get their health advice from other than their general practitioner, uh, their primary doctor, which almost everyone should have a primary doctor. Um, and so a, there's not a lot of time to give a lot of in-depth fitness advice. They might even say, here's the general recommendations of getting 120 minutes of, you know, low intensity exercise, whatever. Doctors walking. are useless. Let's, let's not get crazy. They're not <laughs> useless. So you mean Dr. Um, Bo? Yeah, I'm a doctor. <laughs> God damn it. Um, but with, they're with not useless. Doctors are very good. Yes. And, and here's that, that statement we'll always throw in there is every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. We are very good at saving people's lives. We are very good at saying, hey, you have cancer. Here's the options, how we're going to deal with that cancer. You got into a car accident. Let's put, let's do surgery on this. Let's stop the bleeding. Let's reset that bone. There's a lot of really good and important pieces of what the medical system, whether it's America or any other country right now, can do. But there's definitely deficits. So they're not useless. Uh, the medical no, but system I, is what I, we're I think about. I've, I've been with doctors uh, for us, and, and some of those doctors have said to me, she can't lunge or she can't do this. And I'll be like, well, let me come into your office and show you what, what the lunge looks like, mm. because it's not going to look like what you think it looks like. Right. And I think a lot of doctors go back to litigious. Now I'm one of the few trainers and I know Bo is very, very affiliated with doctors. Also, I have a bunch of doctors I work with that I love the orthopedics. Um, and you got to remember, they have their own inner, inner sanctum of, of rehab. They have their own groups of rehab people that are part of their, their organization. Um, I've been fortunate enough that some doctors have come out to me and worked with me um, because they like my work, I guess. So with that being said, we're in a place right now where I don't think doctors really are pushing this thing out. Like you really need to exercise or you're going to die or you really need to do this. This is all reversible. We're not hearing that. And when I say doctors are useless, I don't mean that they're useless. But when it comes to fitness, they really don't push that fitness button. Well, there's a huge all. gap. There's a huge gap, which no. is why my brand is Fit Care. It's bridging that gap between fitness and healthcare, and also trying to avoid that healthcare system. Also trying to avoid medications, as you mentioned, your mother's on zero medications. That's yeah. incredible, and it's incredibly rare for a 92 yeah. year old to be in that situation. And that has a lot to do, I know, with a the way she was raised, b the influence I'm sure you had directly on her. Um, so I think those are vital things to talk about. And again, if you're a 50 year old right now and you're listening to this, or, you know, somebody who's 60 years old and maybe on two or three medications, there are ways to safely get them off of those medications. And that should yes. be the goal. That should be the goal, but it has to be safely. It should be communicated with the physician that put them on that medication and getting the clearance. So we never want to, again, go outside of these kind of walls and things like that. Again, most statins have more side effects than benefits in my opinion. So if I can avoid a statin and I have a history of heart disease in my family, that's one of my primary goals is to avoid ever having to be put on a statin. Um, I eat a good amount of uh, co good cholesterol foods, let's say, um, <laughs> you know, but obviously with, with some concepts around it. And I think a lot of that also is poorly understood or again, the system is not designed to go into the nuance of well, there's very low d density lipoproteins, which VLDL and VHDL. And we go into what is cholesterol actually doing? Most doctors, uh, as soon as you're above 200, hey, we need to put you on a statin. That, and that's partly, again, the money part of it. And we can go into in depth. That's on all a that whole stuff. different podcast. It's a very different podcast. But at the same time, just real quick on the cholesterol thing to finish that off is HDL theoretically is protective of your heart. LDL being too high, it's against the bad cholesterol. I think these are kind of wrong, but there's more to it than that. The ratios are important. Uh, triglycerides is another piece of that. But at the end of the day, 
one of the best analogies I've ever heard of cholesterol, and I hope uh, anyone hearing this, it, it kind of resonates with you, is, uh, again, if you ask your physician, hey, would you, re and if, if they're wanting to put you on a statin above 200, would you prefer my cholesterol be at zero? And if they say yes, because if it's just, hey, get it as low as possible, that's a sign they don't understand anything too much. And again, I'm not asking you to go in there and, and fight with your doctor, but uh, it's a sign they don't really understand how cholesterol works. Cholesterol is the firefighters, all right? And if we're not talking about changing why the firefighters are at the house to fight the fire, if you have 200 units of firefighters, right, just like cholesterol, that means, hey, there's a lot of fire and there's more firefighters when there's more fire. So when we talk about cholesterol, can we have better firefighters? Can we have uh, different firefighters? Maybe that's part of the conversation, but also why is there fire in the house? And we're never asking that question. That's the big difference with functional medicine. I've had some functional medicine practitioners on my podcast. Uh, the other one, Bo Knows Health. So there's a lot there. There's a lot there. I, you got but, me all but excited, it, but I'll throw it back to you. But let, no, let, let's go back to what, to what you just said. Firefighters. That, he did say firefighters. Very well played. Uh, the, the three organizations that we did come up with for seniors are AARP. There's the National Council on Aging, NCON and the National Institute on Aging. That's, there's a other little spur, like little spinoffs of those organizations, but those are the only organizations. And I don't know of any others, and I work with seniors, and seniors are underserved, and there is a huge, huge gap. But that's the only place they're getting their information, and a lot of the stuff that we're talking about isn't in those magazines. Because unfortunately, since I am the age that I'm at, they AARP still tries to keep sending me stuff to get in. So I read some of the stuff they send. So let's add another one. Reach out to you guys. Demand better. If the Anytime. Seniors, have, seniors got a question, seniors that's, have That's questions. why we're here. That's why we're here. That's, they that's reach the out to, to you guys. Yeah. And, and, and listen, there are people out there. The problem in the senior market is very, very, very basic. There's not a lot of people who are, gonna, who are putting in the time necessary. I think people are too nice. I don't mean to be mean to seniors. But you have to push them to do things. And the more and more they, they do things and they achieve, it's like a teenager going up where they start developing more and more confidence. They start becoming more self-assured. And the senior themselves will change. And I'll always throw in when Corona is using extreme language um, <laughs> that it, 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 we, I 100% agree. But the caveat and the nuance there is that they need to be pushed. And I know he agrees with this. He just didn't use the words. So that's why I'm throwing that in there is safely, yes. aggressively. Yes. Um, again, I'm confident if you give me an 80 year old woman with a, a diagnosis of osteopenia, osteoporosis, she comes into my garage right now where I'm seeing clients, I can get her to deadlift a 40 pound dumbbell. No problem. She has the strength for it. If she's able to walk into my garage, she has the strength to deadlift a 40 pound dumbbell and the bone strength to do it. And she's gonna start improving her bone strength by doing it. All I need to do is show her the form, empower her, get her to feel confident with it. I, I know saying those words right now, a lot of people are like, what, what? Like, and, and, and it's really gotta be, yeah. I think on a one-to-one -one basis, it's really hard to do in a group setting as we talked about, which is where one of the problems when we talk about CrossFit or any of these other group fitness classes, um, silver sneakers again, but at the end of the day, this is where I come back to advocating for a, a we, we can call it a physical retirement plan. Uh, I talked about some of the objective measures like grip strength that we're talking about. Uh, annual movement screen. So you go to your general practitioner and they check on your heart. They check on your atherosclerosis. And I want to throw this out there too. I just heard uh, Dr. Peter Atia, who's, I would say, one of the, the best resources and Corona and I were talking about him beforehand. Yeah. Um, but I really like this concept. He talked about the four horsemen uh, of modern death, basically, if anyone knows the four horsemen of the apocalypse concept, there's four, the top four ways we die. Um, and the funny thing, and, and we're getting to here is movement kind of addresses all four of these. So number one is atherosclerotic, uh, cardiovascular disease, ASCVD, fancy term. Um, number two is cancer. And again, cancer might not directly, uh, it's hard to say, you know, oh, if you just do more fitness, you're going to avoid cancer. There's a lot there. There's a lot yeah. of signs. There's a lot of research there. Um, number three is neurodegenerative disease. We're talking about Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, these kind of things. And number four is the spectrum of metabolic diseases like diabetes and things like that. And again, there's some overlap there. And at the end of the day, movement 
still fixes everything. And a lot of the, we could also say a lot of those four diseases of modern diseases, uh, A, weren't around a lot hundred years ago. Uh, so 100%. there's something going on there. Uh, B, again, it's, it's the way to address them and really improve and avoid a lot of these things is starting to move better. So Dr. Peter Atia, something we talked about here is talks about the centenarian Olympics. And it yes. really just comes down to let's get you measured head to toe of how your joints are moving. Uh, again, one of those really easy things I'll throw out there is uh, if you're sitting down and you can swing your left leg out, uh, foot out, I should say, if you're sitting with a foam roller between your thighs, between your knees, and then you do the same thing with your other leg and you have a difference in hip range of motion. So that's hip internal range of motion. A uh, huge correlation in the evidence that if you're below a certain degree, and I'm not going to say exactly how much because we're it's a little past the, the, the scope of this podcast, that's highly correlated to having a total hip replacement. That's more likely that, again, you're, you're going to be losing function very soon. And these are things we can start stretching out. I bet that, you know, uh, somebody who's 40 years old right now uh, listening to this can do that assessment. I, I do this assessment with a lot of folks, and a lot of folks are deficient in it, and we put them on a simple plan. This is my whole Bow 30 system. In 30 minutes, I can figure out what's going on with you, what, how to get you moving better, and then get you in a plan in place for the next 30 days. And that should take us into the next 30 years. That, that's the problem, though. That is essentially the problem because there, there's a plan in place and there's things that are being done. And what we'll go back to the beginning of this thing is that some of the issues that they're having are very easily deciphered. Uh, a shuffling concept means that there's no function nine times out of 10 below the knee. Shuffling yeah, referring to the feet kind the of feet. shuffling on the floor, not being able to lift. Correct. That comes back to leg Correct. strength, right? And all these Correct. kind of concepts. So there's, those things can be, you know, we could tell you how, what you got to stretch, what you got to strengthen, all that stuff. It's it's there in front of you, but they're not really using it. And the trainers that do do it or do do work with seniors are babying the seniors. And the seniors do not need to be babied. They need to be pushed just like you and me. And, I, and I'll, again, take this to the, the 40-year-olds, the 50-year-olds who are expecting to have some of these issues. I'll bring up an example, and I'm sure Corona knows a lot of these same kind of concepts where – I go and do this assessment. I say, hey, you have X, Y, Z going on. We should really address this because it's going to, you know, make you likely to have a surgery very soon. Um, and I don't want to play off of fear tactics and all that stuff, but it's the reality of what's going on when I assess you. And they're like, eh, I'm going to work with my personal trainer to keep improving my golf game. And that's my focus right now. And that's where my money's going to go. And like, I, I'm not going to fight you on that. But at the same time, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, that's a very small, maybe population percentage of the population. Unfortunately, it's what I see all too often, uh, especially in the CrossFit space is like, hey, if you do 12 weeks of my program, we're going to address your squat pattern. You're going to come back feeling stronger than ever. And I have time and time again, people who go through it, follow it to the T and feel better and get rid of their issues and fix their tendons. Uh, and then they can, who knows, it's hard to measure how much surgery we've avoided. Um, but I'm confident that we are doing that. So that's my little soapbox. I'll get off of that for a second. Where are we at on uh, moving into these pieces? So, so I thought for us was gonna have a question. My bad. So, so the, the so the other thing I, I really want to talk about before we before we you know close this all out is certain things for seniors to actually have to do. You know, um, a lot of seniors have trouble getting out of couches. Couches are too low. They they the bottom comes out. There are things that you can put in between underneath the cushions to keep them propped up. You can also lift the back end of the couch slightly to help them. But the problem again goes back to movement. And when when we whenever we discuss this about seniors is that we don't have them moving appropriately nor are we doing what's best for them. We need to have a call to action in terms of getting more of these organizations to support seniors and reach out to seniors because the seniors biggest problem if they don't have family is isolation. And isolation is the worst thing for a senior. So with that being said, Faraz, you got any other questions, brother? Uh, no, I think you guys pretty much covered everything uh, when it comes to, you know, seniors moving and the importance for them to lead an active lifestyle. Because, you know, without it, I, I mean, for I think leading an active lifestyle in general is important for everyone. But when you the older you get, it becomes even more important for people to lead that lifestyle. 
So, yeah, and no matter what age you are, um, you know, the, the old saying is the best time to start was 20 years ago, but the next best time to start is today. Um, so if you, if you, you know, you're like, oh, I, I'm, too, I'm too old to start doing whatever, the uh, counter to that, and I think we talked about on the last podcast, is you're too old to not be lifting. Yeah. Um, and, and again, if you want to extend the, the years you got, extend the quality of those years, the lifespan, the health span, all these different fun terms, we, we're challenging folks to be that change. And if you're a senior, uh, you know, we had Hank Berger, who's 65. He's doing yeah. Olympic weightlifting. He's doing competitions. Again, uh, a rare human for sure and worth applauding. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, we, he's the kind of guy who's going to inspire folks and hopefully not scare them and say, I can never do that. So we need to keep having these conversations of saying like, yeah, you got to start today. If you're 65 and you've never touched a dumbbell in your life, that's okay. But yeah. we maybe want to figure out a way to get you to start touching a dumbbell and safely and progressively, whether it's with someone like Corona, myself, um, with your with your child, with your grandchildren, with whoever, somebody. And that's where, what our call to action is here. I put nodes, change agents, be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, and the other one I'll throw out real quick for as to your question of, you know, what's the, the benefit of going into those deeper ranges of motion is if you don't use it, you lose it. So, again, if I don't raise my arm all the way overhead with my sweat pit, pit stain there, um, if I don't do this and I can't have that full range of motion of my shoulder and I'm just only reaching, you know, maybe to here or not even here, and then I'm losing this whole range, I literally your shoulder will just eventually adapt and say, like, I don't need to go there, so why am I going to continue to have that capacity to go there? And it's just going to adapt to whether it's poor posture, all these different things. So if you don't use it, you'll lose it. It's just that simple. This goes to running, uh, to high intensity pieces, to, to the muscle and muscle is expensive on a physiological basis. And another term we haven't somehow said in this entire podcast, say it, I'm, say it. I'd be remiss is muscle is the organ of longevity. And so, El Martillo has entered the building. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, and for anyone who missed that reference, El Martillo in Spanish is the hammer. So, you know, and it's also our logo, our logo up there somewhere. Yes. Oh my God, this camera is so, so difficult. And it's above also Faraz's about the bow camera. crushing my fitness dream. Yep. Make it all about you, Faraz. Make it all about you. <laughs> um, anyway, so we, we talked about some objective things. Uh, again, we talked about no, being a note. So anyone out there listening, if you have three people in your life, who are in that elderly population. And we're going to define that. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're above 40, you know, and again, you know, we don't want to think of 40 as being elder, but uh, bottom line is if you have someone in your life who has been showing signs of aging, whatever that is, whether it's gray hairs, whether it's wrinkles, whether it's lack of motion, whether it's having orthopedic issues that they need a shoulder surgery and knee surgery from arthritis, or they, these words start getting thrown out and they become normalized, which is fine. However, the challenge here is if you are listening and you have two, three, four people, however many people, we're asking you because that's how we can make this change. Grassroots. This is how CrossFit really became a thing. People getting results in, in these little things and became this kind of grassroots growth uh, that it became a really, really popular thing. And again, it doesn't mean it's right or wrong for everybody. But at the end of the day, the challenge here, if you're listening to this, is – Check in with us. We want to provide you as many resources as possible. But the real big challenge is go talk to those three or four people in your life and uh, challenge them to say, what do you need to start lifting something heavy? Because strength training, again, is going to extend your life. If you do it safely, it's going to – it's just the science is so strong. If we could put it in a pill, I'm sure we would and we'd make millions of dollars. But we don't have that pill yet. So if you can go and get someone to figure out how to start lifting some stuff, and even if they're in their house and it's, hey, let's lift a laundry detergent and do it this many times. And let's start doing that four times a week. But you're going to hold that senior accountable. Um, and, and again, it's, it's just these are the changes that we're going to see really, really be compounding over time and reverse just this constant deterioration. Again, if you have a senior in your life, and you talk to them, you know, every five years, every 10 years, every 15 years, and you look back at that and you say, hey, yeah, like they've just been declining in how much they're doing. They had to stop walking the dog. They had to stop doing X. They had to stop skiing. They had to stop snowboarding. Um, you know, these are the things that we know are leading to an earlier grave. And we don't want that. We want to extend these 
beautiful, beautiful moments we have in life. Life is short. We appreciate you guys being here with us. You know, we don't want to get too morbid, I think, but uh, I'm going to leave it on that of whoever you are, wherever you are, if you are a senior, we want you to get moving. If you have seniors in your life, we want to challenge them. If you are the AARP, uh, let's do better. We're demanding better from you guys. We want you to demand better. We want you as a member of AARP to say, what are my fitness resources? We went on the website and we found very little useful information there up front of, hey, do this much strength training uh, three times a week, let's say. Uh, do you know 120 minutes of some kind of fitness. My really simple answer or, or, or last challenge I'm going to leave it with here is – we all eat every meal you eat. And this is for everyone, every age, including you two on here. If after every meal you have, go for a 10 minute walk, go for a 10 minute walk or, or, if it's be, or be like Faraz and run a sub miles, a sub six minute mile. <laughs> Fair enough. So I'm leaving it with that challenge there of, you know, be the change we want to see in the world. Uh, go for a 10 minute walk after every single meal. If you do that over 20, well, let's say we got three meals a day, 21 meals a week. If you can do that over 11 of the meals, so you're doing it more than half of the meals, you're, you're so far ahead of the curve on movement on top of, if you're going to go and do your six minute mile marathon or, or whatever or miles, uh, if you're going to go and do three, four, five workouts, CrossFit classes, whatever it is phenomenal, but do the 10 minutes of walking a day. I'm confident it's going to move you in the right direction. I will fully agree with you, but I'm going to say this to, to my seniors and to my to the kids of seniors. Knock it off. Get your parents moving. It will help them. It will help them mentally. It will help them physically. I push my mother, not because I'd like to annoy her, but I do, but because it is helping her. And if you really, really want to help your parents, there's nothing worse than not being able to move in your own body because they see deterioration and that doesn't really uplift them. It goes into the thought that what for us that when he first walked in here, which is I'm too old to work out. Mm -hmm. And that is not, no, but you said that your, your friend, the senior, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Not, um, not, not you, not for us. <laughs> <about me. laughs> no, we're talking about you and your six. Perez, it's mile, not all you about you just because you're on camera <laughs> and you got the ego. But I thought put, it was, but clearly it's not. But let me wrap this up today. I first want to thank Faraz, because it's always about Faraz, for being with us. And most of all, I want to thank all of you for spending your time with us today. If you like the show, you can help us by writing a review, liking, sharing, or subscribing to the Demand Better podcast. I'd also like you to remind you that we are sponsored by Fit Care Physiotherapy and Wellness where the idea is to focus on your fitness so you can avoid the health care space. Listen, we are here for you. So if you, all, if you all need anything, please reach out. Love our seniors, push our seniors, and demand better for our seniors and for yourself. We'll see you next time. Have El Martillo out. Bah. Bah. Oh, we should have timed that better. We need to, need to coordinate that one better. Let's try it again. Three, two, one, and...